Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today, as you can see, it's going to be Wonder Boy for the Sega Master System. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite games for the Master System, and a game like I wanted to Let's Play a long time ago, when I was kind of binging in Master System games back in 2013 or 2014 or so, I forgot which year it was. Um, but Wonder Boy is a pretty tough game. It's, it's not a cakewalk. It requires a decent amount of practice, and uh, fortunately for me, I've been playing a hell of a uh, hell of a lot of Adventure Island on the NES lately, and I beat that game for the very first time. Uh, I have beaten Wonder Boy in the past, but it's been years since I last finished it. But with all the practice on Adventure Island, it kind of got me revved up for Wonder Boy again. So Wonder Boy was originally an arcade game by this developer called Escape. They would go on to be known as Westone or West One. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Um, and the arcade game was manufactured and distributed by Sega. And I uh, believe Sega might have even done the home conversion for Master System. They might have done it in-house themselves. I don't know for sure. If you know for sure, post a comment below. Um, but yeah, that would be basically uh, rebranded, relabeled, and reworked as Adventure Island on the NES by Hudson. And uh, Adventure Island actually has a lot of different changes to it, and it's uh, actually a much more difficult game. So that kind of got me... Like I said, it kind of got me prepped for Wonder Boy. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and go through Wonder Boy from start to finish. I actually did a Let's Play of the NES Adventure Island uh, the week previous to this. Uh, so I should be actually pretty good with this. Um, unlike Adventure Island, though, this is definitely going to be more of a casual run. I'm not as well practiced at this game as I am at Adventure Island. I've only done one, one run of Wonder Boy on Twitch. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna be a casual run. This is gonna be one of those things where I might have to continue a bunch of times um, But we'll just kind of see what happens. So just keep that in mind Don't expect an expert run sort of sit back and relax and chill with me as we play through Wonder Boy in the Sega Master System So before I jump into the game though as usual I want to start this off by giving a big shout out to my current patreon backers So they're gonna flash by the screen. Thank you guys as usual for your continued support I really appreciate it if you're interested in supporting this show through patreon uh, links are in the description box as always, so feel free to check that out. Also, there's going to be some super chatters from my live streams flashing by. I live stream on uh, Friday nights now on YouTube, so feel free to come by Friday night and hang out and catch the stream. So let's go ahead and uh, hit the button and jump right into the game. So in Wonder Boy, it's pretty much running, jumping, and shooting. Uh, you've only got one kind of weapon in this game, unfortunately, whereas in Adventure Island, you've got two kinds of weapons. Um, so you've got this hammer that you throw, and you'll notice that it also gets thrown at an arc. Um, you'll also get a skateboard in the game, um, which actually acts as a shield, so it'll basically absorb a hit. Uh, which is can be very very handy in this game. Well, we made the purse appear So the purse is how you access the bonus stages in this game and you'll basically go into the clouds and Collect these icons for I assume points um, Because uh, I, I say I assume because Wonder Boy doesn't actually display your score um, As you're playing unlike Adventure Island. That was one of the nice improvements. Uh, I felt they made in that game I like being able to see my score and see it progressing as I'm picking up fruits and attacking enemies and picking up icons icons and, and things like that. Uh, what's cool about the bonus stages in this game is that they have a tendency of throwing you forward in, in the level. So, you know, it's good to get them if you see them um, because you'll actually advance through your stage much faster. And advancing through your stage fast in Wonder Boy is actually a good thing for me personally because Wonder Boy is kind of a long game. It's got nine worlds you can go to, nine areas you can go to. Each area has four levels in it. Um, so 36 levels total. Um, and that doll I just picked up, that's actually a pretty crucial part of the game as well if you want to see the last four levels. So technically, there's actually 40 stages in the game. Um, four of them you can only access by collecting every single doll in the game. Many of the dolls are hidden. We are not going to get every doll in this game. So just wanted to throw that out there right away so if you wanted to see a perfect run with all the dolls this is not going to be it uh, fortunately in Wonder Boy um, you still get a good ending um, even if you don't get all the dolls so you can you could beat all the main 36 levels beat the final boss and you will still get a happy ending at the end which is great you still save the girl and uh, and you have a nice day after that um, and it's nice and colorful because it's the Sega Master System and that's great uh, I love how colorful these Master System games are. Um, 
I kind of crap on the master system sometimes, but in reality, I actually, I enjoy the system. Um, it's specific games really stand out to me though, and, and specific games are personal favorites of mine, and, and Wonder Boy is one of those games that's just a personal favorite. So here's the, uh, here's the fairy, and the fairy, um, basically makes you invincible for a short period of time, and as you destroy enemies or rocks or things like that, uh, you'll also get some points for it as well. So, like I said, I did Let's Play Adventure Island just a week prior to this, and what you'll probably notice is, is that the scoring system is actually quite different in this game. The, uh, the point values are vastly different from, like, when you get the, uh, the Invincible Fairy, or the Invincibility through the Fairy, when you, ki when you kill enemies with that, the point values are so much lower in this game, so the scoring is just totally different between the two games. You can't really compare them at all. Um, so if you ever see someone getting a really high score in Adventure Island and a high score in, on Wonder Boy, those scores were achieved in completely different ways, basically. So we actually just got the mushroom, which is interesting, because the mushroom actually raises the point values of the fruits. And the fruits actually become worth uh, a lot of points in this game. 500 points per fruit is a lot of points in this game. So when you get that mushroom, if you're playing for score, um, definitely try to grab every fruit you can. Uh, I believe you get extra lives from points in this game, uh, very much like Adventure Island. And, um, and so picking up every fruit that you can is very, very important as well. Yep, just got an extra life, so it basically makes that tiny little jingle when you get an extra life. And you're gonna be hearing me making a lot of comparisons to Adventure Island. Um, Wonder Boy was an arcade game, and Adventure Island was effectively a home conversion of Wonder Boy, the arcade game. But a lot of liberties were taken in that game. A lot of things were changed up. Oops, don't want to get that. That's uh, basically the equivalent to the eggplant in Adventure Island. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna be comparing Adventure Island a lot because I, I did a Let's Play of it last week. Uh, so that's gonna be fresh in a lot of your minds as well. Um, but technically, again, uh, Adventure Island is <laughs> technically a port of Wonder Boy, but so many liberties were taken, uh, I feel both games actually stand on their own and are actually quite different from one another, uh, especially as the game progresses. Uh, Wonder Boy kind of becomes more varied in terms of like the types of enemies it dishes out and things like that. You even go up into the clouds and there's cloud levels in this game and uh, you know, some some different bosses as well that shoot lightning bolts at you straight ahead instead of the, the generic fi bouncing fire attack that you get in Adventure Island. You still get that in this game, you'll see it here at the end of this level. Um, but there is more variation in this game. Um, and, uh, overall the game is also considerably easier. And you'll also notice that I'm on the skateboard. In my Adventure Island Let's Play, I pretty much preached, don't ever get the skateboard. The skateboard is death. Well, in Wonder Boy, the levels are, I should say, the enemy patterns and, uh, you know, the, the density of the enemy count in the stages is much, much, much less in this game. And you can actually get away with riding on the skateboard for much of the game. And so that's gonna actually help us speed through the game, hopefully a little bit faster here. And those are those coyote looking things, uh, just like in Adventure Island. They operate a little bit differently in Wonder Boy, like... There's multiple colored flowers, and depending on the color of the flower, those guys will either just run straight ahead, or they'll jump. And I find that in Wonder Boy and Master System, at least, it's difficult to really predict what those guys are going to do. Are they going to come from behind and just run straight ahead? Or are they going to jump? Um, so, you're going to find that, you know, a lot of them are just going to fly over my head, even though, I don't know, it gets confusing for me in this game. Uh, that mechanic. Alright, so one area down, eight more to go. So that means we're four stages in. Again, this game has 36 levels, so we technically still have 32 more stages to go, unfortunately. So normally, if you get a, if you end a level with a skateboard, you'll actually start the next level with the skateboard as well. But when you get to a boss fight, it forces you to lose your skateboard, unfortunately. Um, so if you beat a boss and you had a skateboard, well, you're not going to start the next level off with a skateboard, unfortunately. So you're going to have to get one on the next level. And here's another doll. This is probably a skateboard right here. Oh, no, it's the fairy. That's okay. Invincibility is good. 
And actually, it might even might not even be a fairy in this one. It looks like a little uh, a little angel, actually. It's got that little halo around its head. Um, so in Adventure Island, um, there's this there's this enemy called the eggplant, and he's in a. Uh, specific types of eggs and he'll follow you around and drain your time meter which is the center bar uh, up in the uh, up in the top part of the screen uh, it looks like a health bar it's actually not a health bar it's actually a timer that's all it is um, some people call it a health bar but it's it's a timer it run it ticks down uh, at a specific interval and when it runs out you die um, so, usually health bars to me indicate that you can take a hit and it'll go down, where that doesn't happen in this game. If you take a hit in Wonder Boy, you die instantly. So, in Adventure Island, you get these things called eggplants, which drains your time much faster than it normally does. Uh, what's really cool is in Wonder Boy, they're not eggplants that follow you. Um, they're actually little Grim Reapers, and it's funny, you'll see him with his, uh, his scythe. And it, it's just, it's kind of cute, actually. You know, Wonder Boy is one of those games where it's a really challenging game, but it's also cutesy at the same time. And it's, you know, it doesn't take itself too seriously. And it's got a lot of charm for that. And, um, you know, if you haven't played this game before and you like those types of games with, uh, you know, some cartoonish charm, uh, I think you'll really enjoy this game, at least up to a point. You'll probably enjoy the game until it starts becoming a major challenge. Uh, these first few areas, you know, these first few sets of levels, really aren't too bad. It's later on in the game where it starts to become a little more memorization heavy. Um, fortunately, because I've been playing so much Adventure Island lately, and it's a significantly, significantly more challenging game, uh, Wonder Boy is, you know, it, it, I, I can usually get through this game without too much trouble. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of see what happens on those later stages. There are some pretty evil later later stages in this game, though. Uh, some of the clouded levels in particular can be really frustrating because you'll be running and lightning bolts will just come down from the sky. And if you keep pushing forward, you're going to get hit by them and die no matter what. So that's where some of the memorization aspects come into play. So it'll, it'll be fun to show you guys those sections uh, as we get to them. And I'll definitely absolutely point them out once we get close to them. So we're almost at the end of this level, and unfortunately no skateboard. So, because Wonder Boy has uh, lots of stages, um, I think the arcade version of Wonder Boy only had eight areas, and then uh, a hidden ninth area if you get all the dolls. Well, the Master System, they extended it by another four levels. Uh, so the Master System version of Wonder Boy is actually very long compared to Adventure Island, or even the original Wonder Boy arcade game. Um, so when I'm playing this, because it's it's kind of a time commitment to go all the way through this game from start to finish, I really like getting the skateboard, because it lets me go through the levels a lot faster. See, kind of like this. You're bolting through these levels. You notice there's not a whole lot of, uh, obstacles right now, surprisingly. And, you know, that's one reason why I use the skateboard in this game. I don't use the skateboard in Adventure Island, ever. Not the original Adventure Island, anyway, on the NES. Uh, but in Wonder Boy, I see the skateboard, I want to grab it right away. I can make full jumps like these, usually. Uh, pretty safely, mind you. Just like that. And we can just really tear through these levels. Well, got a doll, that's good. You know, I'm not trying to get all the dolls in the game, and to be honest with you, I don't even know where all of them are. I don't know where all the hidden dolls are. Uh, I just gr try to grab the ones that are, that are, you know, in obvious and plain sight. Because uh, it's points, you know, you can get some points from extra lives and things like that, and that's always good. When I play these types of arcade games, or any kind of action game in general that has a continue system, I like to try to get as far as I can without dying. And, you know, I'm not one of those types of players that really just sits down and dedicates days or months to try to one credit clear a game. Um, really just survival is all I care about. Beating the game is all I care about. Especially in the case of something like Wonder Boy or Adventure Island, where it's a very long game and it's very difficult. Um, I'm not gonna sit and dedicate tons and tons of time to one credit clear a game. But I do still think, I do still sort of like track progress mentally in my mind. Um, I think, okay, I've made it X distance without continuing this time. 
Um, maybe next time I'll I'll make it another level in. Um, so like an Adventure Island on the NES, I know in my head I've gotten to Area Seven uh, without continuing, and and to me, you know, that's pretty good. There was one point where I could only get to Area Three without continuing, and you know, another point or another time where I only got to Area Six without continuing, and so it's like I I. I'm still tracking this progress in my head, but I'm not too worried about trying to, to trying to pound out a one credit clear or something like that. Uh, maybe if I didn't if I didn't have a YouTube channel and I wasn't constantly trying to put out these let's plays for you guys, uh, maybe it would be different. You know, maybe I would focus on one credit clears and try to actually play these games uh, a little bit better, a little more skillfully, get to know them a little bit better or a lot better in many cases. Um, but uh, that's kind of my lifestyle right now when it comes to these arcade style and action games is I'm not usually a perfectionist, you know? I go for survival. If I can beat a game like this with continuing a couple times, that's fine. I don't have to one credit clear it. But if I can still, as I, as I play throughout the years, if I can still make improvements, I, I feel good about that still. I might not be able to get a one credit clear, but I still feel good about making those tiny improvements. Improving at these games, I think, is one of the things that makes them appealing. And, um, you know, just knowing that you're constantly getting better at these games kind of makes you want to go back and keep playing them. Um, you know, I actually find, you know, it kind of gets me on a, on a sort of like a side topic. It really has nothing to do with the game itself. But I find myself veering towards games that are really, really challenging that I'm not... I haven't perfected. Games that aren't Ninja Gaiden, or aren't Mega Man 2, or, or, or games like that, you know? The games I can basically sleepwalk my way through. Uh, which is why the, like, like, the Adventure Island series in particular has been really resonating with me again lately. Because, for one, I've been playing them better than I have... than I did as a kid. I can actually finish them now. But, I'm still not Ninja Gaiden good at them. If you know what I mean. I could beat Ninja Gaiden. I can almost speedrun Ninja Gaiden. I've even practiced speedrunning Ninja Gaiden. Uh, I can't do that with one, with Wonder Boy or Adventure Island or something like that. And so these games have a really nice appeal to me because there's still a lot of room for improvement. And I can play them just for fun, but the more I play them, the better I, I get at them. And this is a really tricky jump right here. You have to just inch your way over make that platform appear. That's something that doesn't happen in Adventure Island. It's one of those things that was tweaked for that game uh, that is absolutely an improvement over Wonder Boy. Uh, so when I was actually playing Wonder Boy on stream, uh, sections like that really caught me off guard. Because the platform wasn't there. I had to make a leap of faith. But fortunately, you can sort of push the screen over as far as you can, uh, as far as uh, the platform will let you go. Crap, we're dead. I totally forgot about that bat. And you you can make that other platform on the other side just kind of like come in and become activated. And here's an axe or hammer, fortunately, so we don't have to go very far without a weapon, which is good. Um, what is interesting about Wonder Boy compared to Adventure Island is that they're much more lenient about giving you weapons. Uh, in Adventure Island, they will ammo starve you later on in the game. And that just ate my input. I, I mentioned that in my Adventure Island Let's Play. Uh, where Wonder Boy eats your inputs. Um, when there's too much going on on the screen, usually when there's multiple falling platforms and things like that, uh, the game will not register attacks or jumps sometimes. And that's exactly what happens. So, that is a major bummer. We just lost a couple of lives, and one of them was because it ate my inputs. Ooh. And you'll notice that the, uh, the platforms, uh, the, the collision boxes or hit boxes on those platforms don't go out as far and aren't as precise as they are in Adventure Island. So you can actually slip off platforms in this game. You notice how I just fell through the edge of that platform. Uh, that actually won't happen in Adventure Island. In Adventure Island, you can actually sit halfway off a platform um, and still, still be on the platform. It'll still register you as being on the platform. Very much like a Mega Man game or Castlevania or something like that. So, wow, we just lost three lives there. That was a bummer. But, that's okay. Like I said, I'm not- this isn't perfection. I've never one credit cleared this game, and... I'm not playing for perfection right now. Um... 
But yeah, you know, it's it's things like this. Like, there's still so many different ways I can improve at games like these, and I don't have to focus improving at them. All I have to do is just keep playing the games, and I I naturally improve over time. Improve over approve. <laughs> I naturally improve over time. And, you know, there's this constant feeling of growth as I'm playing these games. And it's one thing that really, um, uh, you know, attracts me to really difficult games is, you know, games that I can just ace. Yeah, they're fun to go through every now and then if I'm in, like, the right mood. But I get bored of playing them as well. Um, whereas... In something like this, I can just play it for fun, but also get that satisfaction of feeling like I'm improving, still. I don't get that satisfaction from Ninja Gaiden anymore, games like that, because I'm just so familiar with them. Of course, again, in the case of Ninja Gaiden, you know, I did take up learning how to speedrun it, so that's... That's kind of like the next step you can take if you get really bored of a difficult game. Is the next level to go if you really want to take it to the next level is speedrunning. But speedrunning is a whole different beast altogether. And honestly, you might not even think it's that fun. It really depends on your personality. Um, but that's a topic for another day. We're not going to go on that tangent right now. But yeah. So yeah, the Adventure Island series, uh, and, and subsequently the original Wonder Boy, which is what the original Adventure Island was based on. Um, are really appealing to me again these days because they're very challenging games and I have there's a lot of room for improvement and um, so I'm really looking forward to once I once I whoops <laughs> once I finish Wonder Boy uh, here on a let's play I've already posted Adventure Island as a let's play once I finish Wonder Boy I'm looking forward to t trying to tackle the PC Engine Adventure Island it's called uh, New Adventure Island. I want to tackle the uh, PlayStation 2 Adventure Island Remake. And then there's uh, some other games in the uh, series I'd love to try to tackle as well. So one of the downsides to Wonder Boy, uh, as much as I love the main theme in this game, oh, does it get old. Um, it's one of the downsides to this game, it's just the music is very, very repetitive. So this theme that we hear right now, we're pretty much gonna hear it for the entire game. Uh, the only time it really changes is when you get a game over, or you get to a boss fight. Um... You get to a boss fight, or you get to level 4 in each area. Uh, level 4 in each area does have a different theme, so it's always nice once you get to level 4. But once you're done with level 4, it's right back to this same old theme. And it's a great theme. I, I like it a lot. It's very cheery. Uh, it kind of puts you in a good mood when you play the game. It's very bright. It really actually fits the uh, the graphic style as well. But it gets old. So there was actually a, a jump I made earlier in this level, and I wanted to talk about that. So you've actually got two different jump heights in this game. Just pressing the number 2 button lets you do a baby jump like that. Holding down your attack button, which is button one, um, and then pressing the jump button will make you do your high jump. So there's actually two separate jumps in this game, and that was actually altered in Adventure Island. There are two separate jump heights in that game, but to do the higher jump in that game, you have to just be holding forward. The second you press forward and jump, you do a full jump in Adventure Island. In Wonder Boy, it's two separate functions. So just tap jump by itself for a baby jump, no, ma no matter if you're holding forward or not. Um, this actually comes in handy later on in the game. Uh, or hold down attack and press jump, and that's how you do a high jump. And here we got some slowdown. This is also something else that you'll find different from Adventure Island. There's not really any slowdown in Adventure Island. There's a lot of flicker, but there's no slowdown. Uh, Wonder Boy has slowdown, unfortunately. But uh, it's one of those things you just get used to, and, and honestly, if you're a retro gamer, you've been playing these games for a long time, you're probably used to slowdown. I don't really, I'm not very critical of games that have slowdown, at least not from this generation. You know, I'm critical of modern games that have slowdown, because there's really no excuse with the hardware. Um, oops, and we just got the Grim Reaper. So there we go. I can show off the Grim Reaper, and what's actually kind of funny is that the, the music slows down too. And I've always liked that effect. So, we need to try to get as many fruits as we can, as we get through this part. And this guy lasts a long time in this one, too. Can we hit him? Oh, we didn't hit him. 
So this coyotes actually drop uh, these envelopes, where they make envelopes appear if you uh, hit them once from the front. Actually, you don't even have to hit them once from the front. If you kill them from behind, they'll make these envelopes appear. And the envelopes in this will actually give you a tiny bit of uh, your time meter back, which is kind of nice. Um, whereas in Adventure Island, uh, it's just points. Um, if you kill the coyotes from behind in Adventure Island, they make a Famicom controller appear. Um, but in this, uh, an envelope appears and you get points for it, but it'll actually give you a tiny bit of time back too. Uh, which doesn't happen again in Adventure Island. So cool little, there's lots of cool little differences like that between the two games. And it really, uh, lets both games kind of stand on their own. And, uh, if you're a fan of one game or the other, I highly recommend, uh, playing both. So this is where the, these little spiky, brushy looky things, uh, sort of start falling from the, you know, the treetops. And then you've got these, uh, these, uh, bugs that also fly right at you. And now you've got a mechanic that's not in the original Adventure Island. You've got these volcanoes that shoot rocks out at you. And, uh, this, uh, gameplay mechanic was actually introduced in later Adventure Island games. It kind of went back to the original Wonder Boy arcade game and Master System game, and, uh, you know, uh, brought that into Adventure Islands 2 and 3. But that's one of those elements that's not in Adventure Island, so there's a lot of people that say Wonder Boy and Adventure Island are basically the same game. They are not. Um, these new enemies that have appeared, these bugs, they are not in Adventure Island. Those volcanoes are not in Adventure Island. Uh, the placement of all these enemies is not the same in Adventure Island. Um, so it's from this point on where both games really start to uh, take shape uh, in their own way. And it's just one other reason why I love playing both these games. I don't have a... Uh, I should say I don't have a preference. Really, like, Adventure Island is my preferred one because <laughs> it's much more challenging. And it's, so, for me, it's much more satisfying to actually finish. Um, and I'm not a fan of the doll mechanic where you have to find all 36 dolls. I think it's all 36. I think there's one in every single stage. Um, I want to say it's every stage. Or maybe there's not. I was looking at a walkthrough a couple weeks ago, and I forget what it said. I'm gonna have to refer to the walkthrough again just to see if there is one on every single stage. Um, yeah, um, not a fan of like forced secrets like that. Not in a game that's like this long. It's one thing if you could, if it saved your progress, and you can go back and replay stages. Um, it's actually one thing you can do in the uh, Adventure Island remake on PlayStation 2 and GameCube in Japan. Uh, it actually saves your progress on every stage, and it tracks um, your percentages. It tracks, you know, uh, how many enemies... Uh, not maybe maybe enemies, but it, it tracks, like, the fruit accumulation. It, it tracks whether you've gotten the, uh, the, you know, the doll, or in that game, it's a pot. Um, yeah, it tracks all that stuff. So, it's one thing for everything to be hidden when it, it saves your progress, and it tracks it in, like, this one save file. Um, that's cool, but this game you have to beat it in one sitting. There's no saving this game um, So it's yeah, not a huge fan of the the hidden doll mechanic, and it's not that I Mind them being hidden um, It's that you have to find them if you want to get the final four stages in the game. I think that's just Man, imagine finding all those dolls back when this game was current in, what, 1987, I think, is when the Master System one came out? Um, either 87 or 88, I think it was 87, but just imagine trying to figure out all their locations, um, and successfully getting them and finding them in a single playthrough, it's just absolutely insane to me. I'm sure it was done, I'm sure some people did it, but I'm- oof! I jumped too far, but I'm also sure that many people didn't even think to do it because they didn't even know it was a requirement to get to the very end of the game. So yeah, that was a tangent. I actually <laughs> didn't really mean to talk about, you know, preferences, but there are certain things I, I do prefer in both versions uh, of Wonder Boy. I should just say both versions as in the original Wonder Boy here on Master System, um, and the arcade, and then Adventure Island, which is was supposed to be Wonder Boy, but had significant changes, in including the character change and, and things like that. 
But both games are fantastic. I highly recommend checking out both games. If you're a fan of one, play the other as well. Appreciate them both for what they are. Uh, especially if you can beat the games. If you can beat the games, I think it just opens up a whole other level of appreciation. Uh, there's a lot of people that like these games, but they've never gotten very far, and so I think they they probably don't have the same level of appreciation as as someone that's really spent a ton of time with them and, and finished them. So this is actually kind of interesting. One thing I really like about Wonder Boy is it does mix up the stage designs much more than uh, Adventure Island does. And I think it actually mixes up these stage designs more than the arcade Wonder Boy does. I think some of these backgrounds are new for this version of the game. Um, I really, really want to go through the arcade version of Wonder Boy, so I'm going to have to fire that up on MAME sometime. Um, yeah, really going to have to fire that up on MAME sometime and try to go through it. Uh, I actually have this thing called a Pandora's Box 3 in my JAMA arcade cabinet. And it's kind of like this emulation box. It's like a kind of like a multi-cart, but it uses emulation to have the various games on it. But the emulation is not all that great. The hardware is not that great. So, uh, you know, while I, I've got a lot of games at my disposable, uh, disposable. While I've got a lot of games at my disposal on that um, multi-cart, um, including Wonder Boy, the arcade version of Wonder Boy. The emulation's not the best, so it's got like frame skipping or or sound glitches and, and things like that. So, while I could go through Wonder Boy Arcade on that, it's not how I want to play it. I want to play it with flawless emulation if I can. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to fire it up on MAME sometime. I really, really want to see the differences for myself. In the meantime, I guess I could probably just fire up a long play, but it's just not the same for me. I like to play these games and experience them firsthand and see the differences firsthand as I'm controlling the game. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there watching are the same way. There's just much more satisfaction to get out of it, I feel, if you experience those uh, differences on your own. So here's our first cloud level, and these cloud levels are probably the toughest levels in the game. And this is where lightning bolts start dropping as well. I actually don't know if there's a lightning bolt on the very first one of these cloud levels. Uh, but there is on the second cloud level we go to later on in the game. Okay, this is going to be tough with the skateboard, actually. Getting the skateboard in this level is probably a bad idea because of these guys. Ooh, look at that. So one cool feature in this game, which actually I don't think happens in Adventure Island. In Adventure Island, when you get hit... Um, when you're on a skateboard, you always just fly up, like, the same way every single time. Well, in Wonder Boy, if you jump right as you're getting hit, you'll fly up into the air like you're doing a regular jump. And it appears like you're an, invi you're an invincible... In, 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 in invincible? <laughs> it appears you're invincible in Adventure... Uh, is, uh, oh my god, I can't talk right now. It appears you're invincible at when you get hit off the skateboard in uh, Wonder Boy. So that's a neat little feature as well, something really good to know. And one more reason why getting the skateboard is much less risky in this game. So these guys also, they drop these little uh, projectiles. Uh, they'll actually drop them right in front of you, so you'll actually trigger them before you're even right underneath them. So this is our second type of boss. We see him twice in the game. And he shoots these lightning bolts out, and we got hit. Unfortunately, there's... There's not really a sound cue, like, leading up to it. So, like, you have to just practice it and get used to the timing. And unfortunately, because we got our first game over, uh, we're all the way back at the beginning of the levels. So we gotta do that whole stage over again. But, again, it gives you a weapon, so it's really not that bad. So we're gonna have to just take our time here. Oh, no, not yet. And there's this little flower. It gives us some points. So you can try to take these guys out from a distance as well when you got a hammer. Which definitely helps a bunch. So there's two ways to avoid their projectiles though, aside from just killing them outright is you can try to run under them as fast as possible. If they're too close to your head, it's not going to work. Um, or you can just let them just drop them right in front of you. If you let them drop right in front of you, you can just sit there. You don't have to do anything. It's very much like the, uh, you know, the ice picks that fall from the ceiling later on in the game. 
um, getting like in front of them just slightly will actually trigger their their falling. I think that happens in this game. I'm pretty sure. There's not as many ice levels in this as there are in Adventure Island. Which could actually be seen as a good thing, honestly, because the, the ice physics are no fun. Ice physics are no fun. There are ice physics in this game. And, um... Things are definitely very slippery by default in this game, but uh, when you're in the ice levels, it's even more slippery than before. All right, boss time again. Wow, got him before he even threw his lightning bolt. That's good. All right, so back to some uh, normal types of stages. Yeah, so we are 216,000 for, uh... That actually wasn't too bad. You know, we got all the way up to, you know, Area 4-4 without continuing, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. For how, you know, unpracticed I am at this game, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's not too bad, not too shabby. We'll see how we can do for the rest of the game. I'll be curious, uh, how many more times I have to continue. So one of the great things about the original Wonder Boy that was changed in Adventure Island um, is that, you know, your little Grim Reaper eggs, they're marked in this version, so you can see them from a mile away. And that comes in very, very handy in this game. Um, it's one of the other elements that makes Adventure Island more challenging, um, is there will be eggs and they'll look normal, but they'll be eggplants. You know, basically the Adventure Island version of uh, the Grim Reapers. Um, but in Wonder Boy, you don't have to- you don't have that worry. Wonder Boy is definitely a little more relaxed. It's less stressful, I should say. Uh, so some people are gonna really enjoy this for the fact that it's not as stressful as- as, as Adventure Island. That's one way to- to look at Adventure Island, too. It's something I didn't really talk about in that playthrough. Is Adventure Island can be stressful. Like, it's, it can be a stressful game. Myself, personally, I kind of thrive on that type of gameplay. I kind of thrive on that stress, especially as I overcome it and just grab that stress by the balls and I just progress through the game like it's nothing. Um, but Wonder Boy is definitely a more relaxed experience. And so if you're having problems with Adventure Island, uh, I might suggest trying to beat Wonder Boy first, if you can. Because, uh... A lot less micromanagement in, in uh, Wonder Boy, I'd say. And uh, overall, it's just a lot, a lot less stressful. So we got a skateboard. Let's see if we can actually keep it uh, this time. I haven't been doing a very good job of actually keeping the skateboard. Fortunately, your run speed is still pretty fast in this game. Still pretty fast. But your skateboard speed is, is much, much faster. And there we go. You know, one thing I'd also like to check out is the other varying conversions of this game. Um, apparently there was a port of Adventure Island to the MSX, but I'm told, or I read, that it still uses the original Wonder Boy music, so it still uses this theme. Um, so it was more closely based on Wonder Boy than the NES Adventure Island was, so I definitely want to check that out. Um, I want to check out the SG-1000 port of Wonder Boy. And I'd like to check out some of the other computer ports of it as well. Supposedly there's an Atari ST one. Um, so I'd like to check that out too. 
Actually, funny, funny story about that, I actually have the disc for the Atari ST one. Um, but it doesn't work in my Atari ST, the disc must be bad. So, I'll have to try to obtain another copy. Maybe it's just not compatible with my ST, but I, I doubt it. It's a pretty standard model of the, uh, the computer. Yeah, I would love to check out the other versions of this game to see how they compare. Uh, back in the day, I actually played a lot of Revenge of Drankin, which is actually the Game Gear version of Wonder Boy. Uh, it's basically the same game, as far as I can tell. And we missed that. I knew that was going to happen. I should have I should have held back a little bit. That's actually a very difficult jump right there. That was actually made much easier in Adventure Island. And I'll sort of explain how this jump works once we get back to it. But yeah, Revenge of Drankin on the Game Gear is basically this, but with a more scrunched in screen size. Um, and it's great. You know, it's, it's great playing through that on uh, the handheld. And uh, I really, really enjoyed that back in the day. And I think I actually have a cart-only copy of that right now. I don't buy many physical games these days, but uh, I do still have some some random cheapo carts, and that was one of them. So we need to time this just right. It's going out, and then in. Got it. That's probably one of the toughest jumps in the game. Um, and there's a couple of jumps in Wonder Boy that are just very, very tight like that. Um, and it's one of the many reasons why you probably shouldn't rush through the game. Yeah, you know, you, you should play it conservatively. Uh, and the same goes with the Adventure Island games. You want to play them uh, with some level of conservation. Um, because if you just rush through these games, you bum rush through them, uh, you're going to just, you're, you're going to jump down and land in pits and die. And, and there's going to be a lot of deaths that happen that could probably be avoided for the most part. And I'm going to be really curious to see when I get a weapon here on this level. In Adventure Island, they like to strip you of the weapons on these last levels. These boss levels, basically. Here's a weapon. But in Wonder Boy, they're much more lenient about it. Which is nice, actually. In Adventure Island, later on in the game, you have to memorize how to get through these levels without a weapon. And, and that is a pain. It is, it is a pain, trying to learn these later stages. I know I've been making a lot of comparisons to Adventure Island, but it's just what I do when I when I play variations of the same game on varying platforms. Uh, it's just kind of what I do here. Uh, if I play an arcade version, and then I play a console version, I'm always comparing them. If I play a game that appeared on multiple systems, like say Prince of Persia I did recently, I did the Super Nintendo, and then I did the Sega CD one, and during the Sega CD one, I and the Super Nintendo one, I couldn't stop comparing the versions to each other. Uh, that stuff is just really interesting to me, and it also kind of keeps me talking when, you know, I'm doing these gameplay videos. And, um, yeah, it just kind of comes naturally for me. So I know some of you guys might not enjoy that, but uh, that's just kind of what I do here. But yeah, the little, little minute differences like that are really interesting to me. And we're just gonna let him shoot his fireball over me. So this is another difference between Adventure Island. Um, you know, it wasn't until basically Area 5 that I was actually able to give the boss enough time to shoot at me. Um, in Adventure Island, you'll probably have the boss shoot at you even on the first level. Um, so it's one of the differences between the two games. And uh, you know, what's kind of cool about Wonder Boy as well is you actually have more room to attack the boss. Uh, so you can you can really pummel the bosses in this game as they walk in before like they even start shooting before they start getting into their shooting animation you can really like nail them from a distance and get a lot of good hits off on them in adventure island you can't really do that the boss just kind of like appears and you're already kind of like squished into the left side of the screen either way the bosses in both games are usually a non-issue they're not very difficult uh, I would definitely say the lightning bolt guys are a little bit harder because um, you can't just sit right in front of them. You actually have to jump over the the lightning bolt. Whereas with the fireballs, all you have to do is just sit right in front of the boss. The fireball just goes right over right over your head.
Nice, got the fish. The jumping fish out of the water is some of the most annoying enemies in the game, honestly. And there we go. Making pretty good progress. This is probably going to take us an hour and a half to get through. So we're about 45 minutes in right now. I'd say we probably have another 45 minutes to go. Because remember, we've got an... Oh, actually, no, we're at we're area six. We actually might have another half an hour to go. We'll see how the, uh, the later stages... Uh, handle us. So you notice how I just flew up in the air big time? It's because as I got hit by that boulder off the skateboard, um, I pressed the jump button. And so it, it kind of treated my skateboard falling animation as a regular jump, and I just flew into the air. It's kind of a cool, cool little thing that doesn't happen in, in Adventure Island. Again, it's all about those little differences. I like that. Ooh, that was close. Those little, uh, blue kids, by the way, in Adventure Island, they were changed to, uh, pigs. And in later Adventure Island games, they were turned to literal pigs. So, in the NES Adventure Island, it was like, they were kind of like, walking, kind of like they are in this one, but they, they had pig faces. Um, sort of. In later Adventure Islands, they were turned to actual pigs. <laughs> At least the, uh, the PlayStation 2 and GameCube Adventure Island Remake. They're actual little four-legged pigs just walking on the ground. That's funny to see some of the changes they made as the, you know, in particular the Adventure Island series went on. Because Adventure Island and Wonder Boy basically split off into two of their own franchises. Adventure Island, aside from Super Adventure Island on the Super Nintendo and, you know, Adventure Island 4 in, on Famicom... Uh, the Adventure Island games kept the arcade uh, formula from Wonder Boy, the original Wonder Boy it was based on. Whereas Wonder Boy took more of an action RPG direction. Um, with a few exceptions. Uh, like the third Wonder Boy arcade game was actually um, kind of like this uh, auto-scrolling platform shooter hybrid, uh, which is kind of interesting. We'll try to play that on stream sometime, or on YouTube sometime. Uh, once I get more familiar with it. I've owned it before, actually. I've owned the PC version, PC Engine version of it. Really, really fun game. Um, but aside from that one, the Wonder Boy series basically went down the action RPG route. With the, with the earlier games just having light RPG elements and still retaining an arcade-y kind of vibe. Um, but the third one on Master System in particular, which is unrelated to the third one in the arcade, and it's super confusing. Um, really interesting to read up on, though, if you're not familiar with the Wonder Boy series. Uh, but yeah, it gets super confusing. But Wonder Boy 3, the Dragon's Trap on the Master System, is uh, a, basically a non-linear action-adventure game. Uh, Role-playing game elements. And that's basically the, the direction the series went in on consoles. And, uh, you know, there's a couple on the uh, Sega Genesis and Mega Drive that are like that. Uh, it's really interesting stuff, and Adventure Island kept the original Wonder Boy arcade roots. Uh, so if you really like the original Wonder Boy, and uh, you want more of it, play the Adventure Island series. Alright, good stuff. We got that bat. We didn't die at this section this time. That section feels like it was basically the same as it was earlier on in the game, so that was good. So we got floating platforms in the forest, which is kind of cool. That does not happen in Adventure Island. It's yet one of those many differences that Wonder Boy has over the uh, conversion to the NES. So you also notice that the snakes don't shoot in this game. Uh, in the Adventure Island series, they do. And they're kind of a pain to deal with. You notice how... A lot of things in Adventure Island are much more painful to deal with. Hence that whole stress comparison earlier. Um, in Wonder Boy, there's just a lot of things that are just so much easier to deal with. 
Alright, so checkpoint three, that's good. We're making really good progress, actually, even without a skateboard. You know, like I mentioned earlier, even if you don't have a skateboard, your walking speed, or I should say your running speed, is still really fast. So you can make this a fast-paced game, even without the skateboard. And one thing I've just always loved about these games is the speed. I absolutely love platformers like this, arcadey platformers that have a high degree of speed. Not too fast, but an experience that just feels really, really brisk. You know, Super Mario Brothers, Wonder Boy, Trying to think of other games that are also fairly brisk, like this. You know, even like Ghouls and Ghosts, the arcade game, feels fast. Even though it's it, you're running at a totally different pace than this game. There's just a certain feel you get from certain, like, ranges of speed and, and fluidity, actually. You know, a game has to be fluid, too. It can't just be fast. It's gotta be a smooth kind of fast. Like, you gotta be able to run and jump fast and... You gotta be able to jump on a dime, and and you could do that in this game. You know, it just it all comes together, and it feels like a very brisk, speedy experience, and I love it. Alright, checkpoint number two. God, after doing the Adventure Island Let's Play, this is so much easier. There's squids only just every now and then. There's very little happening once I'm on on land. Uh, it's it's great. It's relaxing. <laughs> Again, Adventure Island is stressful. This game is relaxing. So we killed that guy from behind, so we got the envelope, which gave us a little bit of time back. There's a doll. And that's the, the level. Alright, Area 7. Yeah, so I guess we have about 10 more levels to go through. Uh, two areas, four, four, four levels apiece, and then we got two more levels on this area that we're on. And then we'll be at the end of the game, so... We're actually making pretty good time, all things considered. And now we got the skateboard, so let's see if we can keep that pace up. Having the skateboard requires you to be uh, definitely a little bit better with your platforming, that is for sure. Oop, we got ice physics now, that's right. This actually would have been a great time to keep the skateboard. Because you don't really notice the ice physics when you're on a skateboard. Oh, look at that, we got another skateboard. The skateboard pretty much operates about the same way as it does... Um, ...not on ice. So it's something good to keep in mind. Oof, we just lost it. Now we gotta deal with those ice physics again. We probably got that crazy jump at the end, just like on the first time we were at an ice portion like this. Oh, no! Okay, good. And another skateboard, look at that. We're just gonna do a uh, jump like this, jump over that boulder. Awesome, got it. Good stuff, now we get to start the next level with the skateboard. We're actually catching up to my other score as well. I think we've only continued once. Did we only continue? I think we only continued once. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep trying to max out my points. See if we get some more extra lives.
So we got the mushroom, which again, extends your, uh, not extends, but, um, raises the point values on your fruits. So if you're playing for score, it's very, very good to know. Let's get these hearts. I wish I had the instruction manual on me, so I can look into it and see what the point values are on these, uh, these hearts, but unfortunately I don't. I should probably refer to a walkthrough. I checked out a walkthrough a couple weeks ago just to see, you know, what the deal was with, like, unlocking the, uh, the last few stages in the game. And, uh... I actually didn't check to see, like, what the hearts are worth on those bonus stages. Probably another skateboard right there. And the reason I know their skateboards is because you don't really have any other hidden items or any other items in the eggs. It's usually a skateboard. If you've already got a hammer, um, you don't have the flame like you do in Adventure Island. You don't have, like, the ring like you do in Adventure Island. Things like that. Now, you might get, like, the milk or whatever, or the equivalent of the milk. Um, but usually it's a skateboard. So, that's kind of nice. Knowing that, I'll be able to just push forward through these levels much faster. And that's a little mini death down there. We don't want to get that. Although I'm kind of curious if, like, you get extra points if you have death when you reach the goal in this game. In Adventure Island, you'll get 5,000 points if you have the eggplant over your head when you get to an exit. So... Something interesting to think about. I'll have to look into that too. Skip past these guys. Boss time. Okay, we're just gonna jump over like that. And get close this time. You gotta watch out, because the hitbox is a little strict uh, with that fireball. I actually died by getting hit by that fireball, because it just like grazed the top of my head. So, when you're fighting these bosses, you want to play it a little bit safer than you would in Adventure Island. You just want to be right in front of the boss, let the fireball go completely over your head. If you get too close to the fireball, you might get screwed by a bad hitbox, and uh, you will burst up in flames. Okay, so this is a tricky level. Uh, rocks actually start flying out of the wall for some reason. <laughs> it doesn't really make a lot of sense, because there aren't any volcanoes in this vicinity. Uh, we're in the vicinity, and there's also these falling platforms here. We just lost the skateboard, that's a shame. Uh, there's also these fish that come out of the, uh, the waterfalls. So we're gonna sort of just take our time. There we go, there's one. There's a checkpoint, that's good. And there's a falling platform. Just like in Adventure Island on the NES, you can see falling platforms um, ahead of time, because you'll notice that they're slightly discolored, and you'll also notice that they'll flicker. It's just like in an NES Adventure Island. So you can use some of the same strategies when you're playing this game that you would use in Adventure Island. So if you're like me and you're playing both games, like, see, look at that platform. Notice how it's a brighter green on the top. 
Uh, and it's flickering as, like, the, the waterfall animation goes past it. So you know that's gonna fall. And because, um, uh, all these aren't flickering and they're not bright green on the top, you know that they're not gonna fall. I'm just trying to stop because I don't want to get hit by a fish or something like that. And this one's gonna fall, so we're just gonna jump over it like that. And really what I'm looking out for now is the boulders that come from the top. And that's gonna fall too. There we go, there's a boulder. And that's gonna fall, I wasn't paying attention to that one. There's another boulder. Alright, checkpoint number four. Try to take some of these bats out from a distance. Alright, good stuff. Alright, some more bats right here, and we got a falling platform, so just gonna jump over it. This is, like I said earlier, taking your time is really, really good. It's good in Adventure Island, it's great in Wonder Boy. Just take your time. You don't need the rush in this game. And notice how, like, I'm pushing forward fast. When there's no- when there aren't any enemies on the screen, I'm going forward, I'm inching forward fast. Like, you don't wanna just be moseying on slowly, like it's a walk in the park. Like, not using the run button. You want to use the run button when you know you're in safety. Um, so it's like... It's these little bursts of speed that I do. And then I stop. And then I take my time. And then I snipe enemies from a distance. You know? It's a constant, like, stop and go that I'm doing. That's just very rapid back to back. But I'm still playing smart. I'm still thinking about stopping. Shooting enemies from a distance. Playing it safe. Here's some new enemies that aren't in Adventure Island, as well. Uh, they basically operate the same as, like, the bugs from earlier on in the game. So they just kind of, like, dive-bomb you. Ooh, didn't lose the skateboard, that's good. <laughs> I don't want to lose the skateboard. Skateboard is safety, sort of. Because, again, it's one-hit kills in this game. And with the skateboard, it absorbs a hit, so it basically acts as an extra hit point. Plus, it also gets us through the stage faster. Kind of like this. Some pretty tricky platforming there. Good stuff, man. You know what's interesting is that this has more levels than Adventure Island, yet we're still 20 minutes shy of my Let's Play time for the original Adventure Island. That's how long it took us to get through that game. We had to continue a bunch of times. And we're at 8-3 right now, and there's gonna be- it goes up to 9-4 for us. So despite this game having more levels, this will probably take us about the same amount of time to complete as Adventure Island. And that can also partially be due to the skateboard, because we've actually been using the skateboard. In Adventure Island, I avoided, like, the plague. Because you need that extra layer of precision in Adventure Island. In Wonder Boy, it's, you don't need it as badly. So those are some pretty tight jumps there. That always feels good to do just like a baby jump over a rock and then hit a snake that's right on the other side. You feel skillful. <laughs> Even if it's not all that skillful. You still feel it. Invincibility. So whenever I get the invincibility, I just hold the run button down, and I just book it. It gives me an excuse to just kind of like... ...breeze my way right to the next checkpoint, or in this case, the goal. Alright, so this should be the boss level of, uh, Area 8. And look at this, we're almost gonna bypass our initial score, so we're actually doing better now... 
than we were on our first attempt. We've actually made it about the same distance. So we made it to area four and then had to continue. Uh, I am not going to get the skateboard on this level, actually. And this is where the lightning bolts start to appear. So this is probably the toughest level in the game. So we're going to try to take it relatively safe. Try to take these guys out one by one. Lightning bolt right here. Bam, just like that. If you're running fast, you're going to get hit by the lightning bolt. Pretty much guaranteed. So we're just going to inch our way through on this one. See? Lightning bolt again. By the way, lots more birds on this one. Birds dropping things. So just let them drop right in front of you. Not on your head. So if you die at this part, you have to do this section without a weapon, and it is... Trust me when I say it, it is pretty tricky. It comes close to Adventure Island levels of, uh, craziness. And I think there's gonna be another lightning bolt up here. So we're just gonna sort of inch our way slowly. See? Just like that. Checkpoint. Good deal. And now we can just bolt through this part. Because we've got invincibility. birds with a combination of bees so just take our time oh no I just killed myself that was dumb I didn't need to do that all right so we might actually have to do this without a weapon let's see it'd be amazing if it gave us a weapon but I don't think it's going to got hit by that. See, what I wanted to do is try to trigger those bees one by one. If I push the screen too fast, both of them are going to come out at the same time. But it might not be necessary to trigger them one by one. It all depends on their pattern. Boss time. Woo! That was close. <laughs> Getting a little cocky there. Good stuff. So that was pretty cool. I mean, sometimes dying like that is fun in these Let's Plays because then it kind of challenges me on the spot, especially in a game like this where I'm not as not as familiar with what I'm dealing with. And I had to sort of improvise on the fly. So that was good. That, Like I said, that's probably the toughest level in the game. Not counting the four hidden levels, because I haven't been to them yet. I haven't gotten every single doll. Uh, I don't intend on doing it. Maybe it'll happen eventually, but it's probably not going to happen. Because it's, it's just going to be so much effort learning where all the dolls are in this game. Um, but of the nine areas that you can go to, the 36 stages uh, that are unlocked out of the box, uh, I would say 8-4 is probably the most difficult. Ooh, nice! Didn't lose the skateboard. I had a feeling we were going to get hit by that ice pick. I think there's going to be another one of those crazy jumps here, like we had earlier in the game. 
And an eggplant, or a Grim Reaper, as it's called on this one. That was one of those jumps that was made absolutely evil in Adventure Island. You have to get the jump just perfect, otherwise you're pretty much guaranteed to hit the eggplant. There's several instances in Adventure Island like that. Ugh, I had a feeling we were going to miss that. I, I don't even know if that's possible with the skateboard, with, you know, the timing of that platform. But that's okay. We'll get it this time. Okay, so we're just gonna wait. And we're just gonna time it like before. One, two, one, two, one. There we go. Got it. Yeah, so, one thing you can do, if you're having problems, like, timing jumps like that, count it. Like, like, figure out, like, how far out it goes, and then, when it goes off screen, and just count, like, one, two, one, two, like, figure out what the timing is, and then you can kind of help that, you know, kind of, like, talk to yourself, or even do it in your head. Uh, that might help you line up your jump properly. I know a lot of people have problems with jumps like that. And there's some simple things you can do to, to help you, to guide you, through that jump. And what's funny about those french fries, if you look at the logo, it actually looks like a McDonald's logo, just upside down. It's kind of like uh, a lot of old classic video games would have cans that look like Coca-Cola cans. They'd have the same kind of like swirly emblem on the side. Um, but it won't say Coca-Cola, but like you look at it. And you're like, that's a Coca-Cola <laughs> You look at those fries and you're, you're like those are McDonald's fries Like you could tell what the influence was basically Checkpoint number four I'm so glad that these jumping fish are smaller in this game than Adventure Island. It just makes it so much easier uh, to avoid them. Alright, yes! You're still making great progress. We beat our score, too. Yes, yeah, so we only continued once. It's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I was expecting to continue more, honestly. So, two more levels, guys, and then we're done. And we're still beating my Adventure Island time. Okay, got an envelope. There it is. Oh, I... I should have recognized that pattern. I talked about it in my Adventure Island Let's Play, but I, I should have mentioned it. Or, it should have, like, clicked with me. But at least we get a hammer, so that's okay, it doesn't really matter. Okay, never mind, it does matter. Well, we had to continue twice, guys. That's a bummer. I was actually expecting to get through the rest of the game without dying. <laughs> oh, oh well. Can't win them all, I guess. Alright, checkpoint number two. And is there gonna be a boulder here? Nope. Probably gonna be a skateboard though. Yep. Nice. Just go and jump, just like that. So a lot of these levels are just, you know, they're repeating. And so it's the same platforming. There's just more enemies, more obstacles. So if you know you can just do a skateboard jump on one, you can probably still do it now. That was close. Falling... nope. 
Not a falling. This is a falling platform. I could tell because it's discolored. Oh, gotta also watch out for that flicker too. See, this one's flickering. You know it's gonna move. This one's probably gonna fall. Nope, just, just gonna move. And we lost the skateboard. That's okay. This is a falling one. This is a moving one. I wonder. Oh, never mind. You know what's interesting is that. If you get close to the goal, it kind of like just automatically makes you walk to it. Um, so I actually wanted to walk back and touch that uh, rock and see if it was like a hidden doll or something like that. I don't think it was. I think I... Did I get the doll? I don't think I got the doll. Alright guys, well this is going to be our final stage in the game. And let's hope we can do it without dying, because I'm sure it's a pain if, uh, you don't have a weapon. I think I actually had to do it, uh, without a weapon on stream. I think I died and ended up having to do this stage without a weapon. No, you usually get a weapon right there, though, I think. So it really wasn't that bad. I had to do the first section without a weapon, though. I think. I'm gonna have to refer back to my streams. The archive should still be there on Twitch. Twitch only temporarily stores its archives, so if I need, if I want to refer back to a stream that I did, I need to uh, look at it relatively quickly. Oops, that's a Grim Reaper. We're dead. We are not gonna. I don't think we're gonna survive this. I know I said that earlier, and we did survive it, but this is the final stage in the game, so. Well, final stage for us, since we didn't get all the dolls. Yeah, we just died too. Great. Well, that's right, we got a checkpoint, because that's not a game over, so... That's actually probably not too bad, but we're probably not going to get a weapon now. Okay, cool, I can just jump over that. I figured I could, but I wasn't quite sure. Alright, just run through. Lots of slowdown right now, actually. Which is actually kind of helping me. You know, slowdown in video games actually it can be beneficial. You know, it gives you more time to analyze the situation you're in. Oops! I jumped too, uh, jumped too far. But I think we hit another checkpoint, too. Yeah, we did. Okay, let's see if we can get through this checkpoint without... ...without dying. That would be good. Just take take it slow. See? Yeah, we're good. Alright, let's see if we can beat this boss on our first try. And Tom Tom is the name of the first of, of your character. And yeah, that was his girlfriend. You notice this guy's head changes. Just like it has before. Bam, that's the final form. But we're not gonna fight the final form, because we didn't get all the dolls. But, uh, just like I said in the beginning, the game still has a feel-good ending. You still save the girl. You still go home happy. And, uh, it doesn't look like she's got buck teeth like she does in Adventure Island. <laughs> so, that is Wonder Boy, guys, for the Sega Master System. The end. Um... A really, really fun game. Like I said, it's one of my favorites on the Master System. Uh, and if you haven't played this series, um, or I should say, if you haven't played the original Wonder Boy or Adventure Island, play them. They're awesome arcade games. Uh, this this was originally an arcade game in the arcade, so you know there, it was an arcade game. Um, arcade platformers, uh, action platformers, what I would probably call it, since you shoot. And, uh, really fun stuff. Very colorful in the Master System. Uh, it actually sounds pretty good, too. Aside from the, uh, the music getting somewhat repetitive, uh, it plays pretty well. Aside from some very specific moments where it eats your inputs, uh, it, it does play very well, too. And I do highly recommend checking it out. So, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys missed my Adventure Island Let's Play, feel free to go check that out. It was the one that came right before this. And if you're interested in seeing more of this arcade-style 
Wonder Boy action. I've got Let's Plays of both Adventure Islands 2 and 3 as well on my channel. Super Adventure Island on Super Nintendo and Adventure Island 1 and 2 on the Game Boy. I've, I've done so many of these games now, and I intend on keep doing it, to keep doing it. I want to tackle the PS2 remake of Adventure Island. I want to tackle the Wii version of Adventure Island. I want to tackle the PC Engine version of Adventure Island. Um, and then I also want to tackle some of the more arcade-oriented Wonder Boy games that changed up the gameplay formula. You know, they, again, Wonder Boy basically went on its own path, and Adventure Island stuck to the Wonder Boy arcade roots. Um, but Wonder Boy, even though it changed directions, it still has a couple of arcade-specific releases. Um, like the second one on Master System, which was originally an arcade game as well. And uh, the third arcade version, which also got a port to various home consoles, like the, the PC Engine CD. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely uh, keep this uh, this whole series thing going, um, you know, over time. And, you know, maybe eventually we'll have most of these games beaten. That all started at this game, the original Wonder Boy. And it's very interesting video game history as well. If, if you're not familiar with the Wonder Boy series, go look it up. It'll just kind of blow your mind. Just the, the naming confusion will blow your mind in and of itself. But there's tons of great games in the series, and the, the spin-off series, Adventure Island, is phenomenal as well. It's one of my favorites, uh, so go check that out, too, and read up on that. It's very interesting stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, you know, I'm going to wrap things up here. Uh, before I wrap things up, I'd like to give another big shout-out to my Patreon backers uh, that flashed by at the very beginning of the video. Thanks, guys, again, for your continued support. If you watched uh, the video to this point, Thank you for your support. Uh, if you're interested in supporting this show through Patreon, as usual, the links are in the description box below, so feel free to check that out. Uh, and also thanks to the live stream Super Chatters as well. Uh, for everyone else, thanks as usual for watching. Uh, if you're brand new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I've got a ton of Let's Plays on my channel and many, many more to come. Uh, also, a thumbs up probably wouldn't hurt either. Or a thumbs down if you hated this video. Um, so with that, that's pretty much it. I've got nothing else to say. Feel free to leave some comments down below. Um, and uh, until the next video, guys, take it easy.